get this thing going. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, and welcome to the Boston College Alumni Education Webinar. My name is Jean Chizer, and I oversee alumni education programming here for the Alumni Association. Throughout this webinar, you are invited to submit questions by typing them into the question box in the webinar dashboard. Your questions will be sent here directly to us and will only be visible by us. At the end of the webinar, our presenter will answer as many of your questions as possible. You can submit questions at any time during the webinar. Throughout this webinar, we will be asking for your participation through a series of poll questions like this one. Please take a moment now to answer this question. Okay, another second or two for people to answer that question. And what we're seeing here, Kim, is that 68% of people are saying that their brand is a work in progress, 22% are saying what is a personal brand, and 11% feel they have a very strong personal brand. All right, okay. so I am now pleased to introduce today's webinar presenter, Kim Menninger. Kim is from the class of 1997, and she also received her MBA from Boston College in 08. She is also an executive career strategist and founder of Executive Career Success, LLC. I am happy to welcome and turn this webinar over to Kim. Thank you, Jean. I am very excited to be here today to talk about the important and often difficult to pin down topic of personal branding. Uh, first of all, I want to say congratulations to the small percentage of you who feel that you have a strong brand. Um, that is great. And for those of you who, who feel that your brand is more of a work in progress or you're not quite sure how to define personal branding, you're absolutely not alone. Uh, what I'd like to do today is to focus much of this discussion on personal brand strategy. We'll certainly talk about some tactical approaches as well, but without a strong strategy, those tactics just aren't very effective. There are other BC webinars as well as other general resources, and I'll point you to some of them later, that will take a deeper dive into how to use specific tools. But I plan to talk about the value of a strong brand, how to define your current brand, and what you can do to maximize your brand to more effectively achieve your career goals. We'll talk about that in the context of both online as well as offline activity. So first off, what is a personal brand? Personal brand is a popular buzzword. It's defined slightly differently by different people. This quote by Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, is my favorite definition because it really captures the essence and the significance of personal branding. He says, your brand is what other people say about you when you're not in the room. It's really quite simply how others perceive you based on their direct experiences with you, your reputation, etc., And it directly influences your ability to effectively manage your career path. So think of yourself as a product. As consumers, we all have attitudes and beliefs about the brands that we use or encounter. If you've had a good experience with a brand, you'll have a stronger emotional connection, your loyalty will increase, you'll likely recommend it to your friends, if you've had a negative experience, you'll probably avoid it in the future. You may tell your friends or you may even use social media to vent your frustrations. Think of the strong brands that you know. Nike, Google, Coca-Cola, Amazon. The strongest brands create an emotional connection. They're also powerful. They stand for something. Powerful brands are bold. There's nothing ambiguous, wishy-washy, or confusing about them. Take, for example, a luxury brand such as Mercedes-Benz. They're not trying to be all things to all people. They have a clear target, a clear focus, and a clear message. Strong brands are authentic. You believe in and trust them because they are what they say they are, and they do what they say they do. 
they don't try to be something that they're not. Amazon, for example, has consistently been willing to compromise on short-term profits to stay true to its longer-term vision. It can sell out to meet market expectations. Strong brands are consistent. You have a predictable experience when you encounter them. I'll take my favorite example of Diet Coke. Right? Every time I drink a Diet Coke, I know what to expect. Doesn't matter if I'm in Massachusetts or California. Doesn't matter if I drink it out of a can or a bottle. I know what I'm getting. Strong brands are visible. It's really difficult to establish a strong brand without visibility. If it's the best kept secret, it's just not going to have the desired effect. Most importantly, a strong brand has clear value. A flashy, innovative, or cool brand isn't going to be successful if it doesn't address an actual need. So why do I mention this? Because all of these same qualities apply to personal brands as well. So as you're thinking about your own brand, think about these qualities and how they fit. Jean, I'd like to turn it over to you now for Colton 2, please. Yes, and here we go. We're going to launch that poll question right now. It, the question is, which of the following do you view as the greatest value of a strong personal brand? Please select one answer now. Okay, just a few more seconds so that people vote. Okay, it looks like just about everyone has voted. And here are the answers. So from least to greatest, 10% say they feel that the greatest value is separating themselves so they're recognized for their contributions. 29% say they like having others know, like, and trust them. And 61% feel the, strong, the greatest value of a strong personal brand is establishing value so they're considered for new opportunities. Kim, back to you. Excellent, thank you. And, and all these reasons are valid. Um, we're going to talk a little bit right now about why your personal brand is important. So we talked a bit already. Your personal brand influences your ability to drive your career where you'd like, to, like it to go. So these days, we have much greater control over our destinies. It really wasn't that long ago that professors would leave high school or college, go to work for a company where they grow from within, and ultimately retire with a gold watch and a pension. Uh, while there was better job security, there wasn't a lot of room to change course. You made a commitment to your company, the company made a commitment to you. Times have definitely changed. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, median employee tenure at one company is only about four and a half years. So what does this have to do with personal branding? With great control of our destinies, comes a lot more responsibility and a lot more competition. Not staying in the same company for many years means we are regularly pursuing new opportunities. To effectively manage your career, you need to proactively manage your personal brand, even when you're not actively looking to make a change. Having a strong brand gives distinct advantage over others. Your brand differentiates you from your competition, allowing you to stand out from the crowd. It allows you to attract the attention of influencers, sponsors, mentors, others that would like to help you succeed and be able to open doors for you. And it enables you to more effectively meet your career goals by best positioning you for the opportunities that you want. So what is your current brand? Whether we're conscious of it or not, we all have our own personal brands. To understand your brand and how it's affecting your career, steps that you can take. The first step in the process is to know yourself. If you're not clear about your own identity and how you want to be known, you can't manage how others perceive you. So start by thinking about what makes you unique. What are your strengths? What makes you different 
from others in similar roles at similar levels. For example, are you a highly technical person who also has a keen business sense? Do you have a strong global perspective? Maybe you speak multiple languages, or you've spent time living or working in other countries. Now think about how your uniqueness translates to value. Being unique is one thing, but to put that uniqueness to work for you, it needs to have value to someone else. So think about your key accomplishments. What measurable contributions have you made through your work? What do other people come to you for? Are you the resident expert on social media? Are you the person that people come to for advice about how to handle a difficult situation? Think about what others value in you. And think about what you want to be known for. What do you want others to say about you when you're not in the room? So once you've thought about how you see yourself, you want to evaluate that against how others perceive you. And the best way to do this is to actively see, seek feedback from others. So to start, talk with trusted colleagues. They could be current or former coworkers, managers, people who know you well and know your work. The important thing is that you trust them to be honest with you. Let them know that you're committed to maximizing your development as a professional and you really want to understand what they view as your strengths and weaknesses. Many companies offer formal 360 degree surveys as a means of collecting this type of feedback. These surveys are referred to as 360 degree because they're sent to people who are hierarchically above you, below you, below you and at your peer level. The responses are generally collected anonymously and they're provided in aggregate, so people tend to feel more comfortable providing candid feedback. If a 360 is an option for you, I would highly recommend taking advantage of it. And finally, dig up your past performance reviews from current and previous roles and look at them for feedback. Look for themes and think about how that feedback aligns with your own perception as, the, as well as the perceptions that others have based on your conversations with them. Uh, Jean, I'd like to turn it back over to you for poll question three, please. Okay, I'm going to launch that now. Please take a moment to select one answer. As you think about strengthening your personal brand, which of the following is your primary goal? Please vote now. Okay, just about everyone has voted. So here's what we have for answers. 25% say they want to advance their career within their current organization. Similar number, 22% say they want to find a new job in their current field. 40% say they're looking to make a career transition to a new role or field. And 13% checked other. Back to you, Kim. Great, thank you. So we're going to talk now about how do you strengthen your brand to reach your specific goals, as you just identified. So to maximize your brand, you first need to define that goal. What is it that you're trying to accomplish? It sounds like most of you are looking to make a career transition. Once you've defined your goal, you want to think about the audience that you need to reach in order to achieve that goal. Who are the influencers that need to know, like, and trust you? And now think about this in the context of your current brand, what you know about yourself based on what you uh, talked with others about and have done some self-reflection upon. And, and think about how well positioned you are to reach your goal. Do you need to make any changes? If you determine that you need to make some adjustments to your brand in order to reach your goal, start by identifying the gaps. Are there specific, specific elements missing that you can gradually begin to add? So for example, if you're interested in transitioning to a role with a highly specialized skill set, let's just use digital marketing for example, 
you might need additional education and experience in specific areas, like SEO, social media, et cetera. So think about some of the gaps that you can start to address. There are classes or trainings that you can take to beef up your skill set. Can you gain some additional experience through new internal projects, external volunteer opportunities? Uh, perhaps you're make, looking to make a transition, but you just don't know anybody in your target field. This is going to require you to strategically expand your network by targeting influencers who can help you make that change. Another step in the process is to simply act the part. You may need to make some changes over time, but you don't need to wait to start positioning your, your new approved brand. Start introducing yourself to others the way that you want to be perceived. I recently worked with a client who was having a lot of difficulty making a leap from one side of the investment banking industry to another because of the way she talked about herself. She spent a lot of her time talking about what she'd been doing in the past and what was motivating her to make a change. This was diluting her message, confusing her audience. Now what she's doing is focusing much more on her future role. Why is she a great fit for that role and what value does she have to offer? And since started doing this, she's begun to get much more traction. If you're trying to make a change, whether it's to a new role or industry or just to a new level internally, you really need to start speaking their language. Understand what's important to them. What challenges are they facing? What problems do they need to solve? And then start talking about yourself accordingly. In some cases, you just need to reframe some of your existing experience. I've worked with many professionals who've reinvented their brands in order to target new opportunities. So for example, one client had a successful career in the finance space. He had a master's degree in accounting, a long track record of success financial analyst, but his goal was to transition to a more externally facing role in sales or business development. So to support this transition, what we did is we looked back at his work to determine where he had relevant experience he hadn't actually considered. So obviously his work had been heavily finance oriented, but he had actually developed a lot of relevant sales skills such as negotiation, influence, relationship building through his work cross-functionally as well as with external vendors and partners. By reframing his existing experience to align with this new direction, he was really able to strengthen his brand and now actively interviewing for business development roles without having to take that step back that he feared when he first considered making this type of a change. Another client that I worked with had been the CFO for his own company for most of his career. Unfortunately, he was in a dying field and he needed to make a change. And as he considered his options, he really wanted to lead an IT organization. That was his passion. While he didn't have any formal IT leadership experience, he was self-taught and he had done a lot of informal work in this area. So in our work together, we leveraged the experience that he did have to reframe his narrative. And as a result, he was able to quickly secure a role as VP of IT for a large credit union. What? We're saying that they have so as you think about how to maximize your brand to reach your next step, it may be that you need to make some actual changes, or you might just need to think a little bit differently about how you position yourself. So visibility is critical to your success. Once you've defined how you want to be perceived by others, and you've started to make some adjustments to manage those per perceptions, you need to start showcasing your brand. And here are some of the steps that you can take. First, build influential relationships. Start making connections with decision makers and others who can support you in achieving your career goals. Through these connections, you have an opportunity to demonstrate your value and reinforce your fit with new roles. When I was working in the corporate world, I would regularly schedule meetings with high-level influencers in my organization to learn more about their career paths, share my goals, and seek their advice. In the process, I was able to really increase my, invis my visibility and build some powerful relationships with people who were instrumental in helping me to advance my career. Get involved in cross-functional projects. Look for opportunities to meet other people, do new skills, and broaden your reach. Through your work on these projects, others will start to see your value and better recognize your potential. If you're looking to fill some gaps or to strengthen particular skill sets, 
volunteering can be a great way to do this. And it's another great way to extend your reach and increase that visibility. Getting involved in an industry group or professional organization, particularly in a leadership role, is also a great way to establish yourself as a leader in your field, to meet some new people, and to stay current on the latest developments. And finally, think about starting a website or a blog. If you have a new perspective, new information that you want to share, starting a website or a blog can be a great way to increase your brand visibility and establish you as a thought leader. This leads us to our discussion of social media. Social media is an incredibly powerful way to showcase your brand, if you manage it strategically. So we're going to talk about some steps that you can take to launch your social media presence to maximize your personal brand. First, you want to choose your platform. And you want to choose them mostly. To choose the best platforms first, you need to define your audience. Who are you trying to reach? Hiring managers, recruiters, industry leaders. This is going to determine which platforms you choose, how you communicate your message, etc. LinkedIn is a no-brainer because of its power work of professionals worldwide. I highly recommend that every one of you invest in LinkedIn. Depending on your specific background and target audience, though, there may be other platforms that are relevant for you as well. Because consistency is important, you'll want to choose a smaller number of platforms where you can more fully engage. So choosing one to two platforms where you actively, consistently participate is much better than choosing 10 platforms and not having any real presence on any of them. So here are some of the options that you may want to consider. The first is blogging, which we just talked a little bit about. It can be a great way to share your views and ideas. These days, it's very easy and inexpensive to set up and maintain your own blog. I use WordPress, which is great. LinkedIn actually recently opened up a publishing platform to all users rather than just the top influencers. So this is another great way to blog and also increase your visibility on LinkedIn. Some important things to consider if you're thinking about blogging is number one, you're ability to write. You may have a lot of great ideas, but if you're not a strong writer, blogging can actually damage your brand. And number two, think about your ability to be consistent. Blogging isn't useful if you can't commit to writing on a regular basis. You now, weekly or something is a good start. Some people write shorter, more frequent blogs. The important thing is that you establish some momentum and develop a following. The second option is microblogging. Microblogging sites are a great way to engage more interactively. So rather than writing longer blog posts, you're posting brief relevant updates, giving and receiving likes and comments, and adding people to your network. So Twitter is one we often think about when we think of microblogging, but LinkedIn, Facebook, and Google Plus are great microblogging sites as well. And these platforms are also used by a lot of companies and influential leaders to share relevant information on their own initiatives and activity, including job postings, so they make great research tools. They're also a great place to engage directly with target companies and decision makers. Now, if you're a dynamic speaker or presenter and you have a strong message to deliver, video and audio sites can also be a great way to showcase your brand. YouTube is obviously the most well-known video platform, and because it's owned by Google, it's a great way to increase your rankings in Google search results. You might choose to narrate a presentation you've developed, share a how-to video, convert your blog post to video. Videos are just a great way to expand your reach. Another option is podcasting. You might create a video or audio podcast to share your perspective on your areas of expertise. And you can promote it using other forms of social media like Twitter or LinkedIn. Uh, now again, the consistency is really important here. So if you are interested in doing a podcast, you'll want to choose a format and a topic that allow you to engage on a regular basis. A more static visual site that's for sharing presentations is SlideShare. SlideShare, which is now owned by LinkedIn, is a site where you can upload PowerPoint presentations, follow other presenters, measure your activity, and each time you post something, a notification gets to, to LinkedIn, which further expands your reach. So it's a great way to establish yourself as a thought leader in your field. 
And finally, image posting. Image posting sites are used a lot these days by younger generations, but they can also be used by professionals, particularly those in creative fields. So if you have visual content to share, sites like Instagram, Pinterest, and even tw Twitter are great platforms for distributing your images and engaging other people in relevant fields. So I would like to now turn it back to you, Jean, for poll question number four, please. Okay, we're going to launch that right now. Please take a moment to answer this question. Which of the following social media strategies do you most often use to maximize your personal brand? Please vote now. Okay, looks like almost everyone has voted. So the biggest number is coming in at 50% where people say they engage with others primarily to meet professional needs. 31% say professionally they don't actively engage with others. And 19% say they do proactively strive to add value to their online networks. So just as I close this poll, I want to give a reminder to people that you can submit questions for Kim to answer at the end of the webinar. Kim, back to you. Thank you. Wow. Very interesting results. So social media is a great way to get yourself out there. But to maximize your brand, you really need to approach it strategically. And people make the mistake of treating social media in a very self-serving way. They focus on their, their own goals, their own interests, and their own activity without really thinking much about their audience. So while you certainly want to let others know who you are and what your goals are, you really focus on adding value to others. And kudos to the 19% of you who said that you proactively strive to add value. That's, that's great. You can do this in a number of different ways. Uh, first is to share your own content. If you're blogging blog posts, you can also share links to any presentations, videos, recordings, articles that you've either created yourself or somehow been affiliated with. You've been quoted or participated in some way. Start discussions either on your own page or on group pages regarding topics that interest you. Simply asking a question can be a great way to get a conversation going. And then remember, when someone responds, be sure to acknowledge that response because you want to encourage that engagement. You can share curated content. Follow other thought leaders or news sites in your space and post links to relevant articles. This is a great way to show that you're on top of what's going on in your field. Uh, Feedly.com, for anyone who's interested, is a great site for aggregating articles from all of the different news sources that you're following. I actually use this to manage content for my own social media strategy. It just makes it really easy to go to one, one stop to uh, look at all the different articles from all of the different sources that you're following. And lastly, engagement. Commenting on others' posts. Respond to what others share. It's a great way to share your perspective and also to engage new people. So one of the downsides of social media is that it's really easy to have a huge number of followers or connections without any meaningful relationships. You want to make sure that you're making deeper connections. So it's to have a vast LinkedIn network, but if you don't have any personal interaction with these people, the value is obviously limited. So if you make a good connection online, take it to the next level with a request to talk offline. And finally, create a social media plan. It's very easy to get distracted and overwhelmed by social media. It can feel time-consuming, unproductive, and difficult to stand out in the crowd. If you stay focused on social media plan, you'll maximize your efforts. So once again, you want to commit to consistent activity on the platforms that you've identified. That's again why it's important to have a smaller number of sites to manage. You want to manage your time 
So to manage your time efficiently, choose, let's say, 15 minutes a day to invest in your social media efforts. This could be the actual posting or engaging process, or it might just be doing some research and looking for some articles to share. If possible, think about creating a calendar to manage your activity. So for example, maybe you spend Monday mornings reviewing news sites to find articles, Tuesday you might do some posting, Wednesday maybe you visit some groups and make some comments. If you break the activity down into shorter, more managed chunks, the process becomes much more sustainable. Use automated scheduling tools like Hootsuite and TweetDeck to pre-schedule your posts so that you don't actually have to go out there each time and actively post. And finally, keep track of your You make sure that you're getting a return on your investment. If, for example, you're consistently posting on Instagram, but you're not getting the engagement or activity from the people that you really want to target, you either want to make some adjustments to your strategy or you want to choose another platform. So again, generally speaking, social media is a great way to get more visibility, to maximize the power of your brand, but be very thoughtful about your, your efforts and how you use it. So now we're going to talk a bit about how you manage your brand. Most of us aren't consciously aware of our personal brands until we decide that we want to make a change or we experience a challenge in our current role. Don't wait until you reach a crossroads or a crisis to start thinking about your brand. To maximize your career success, it's important to think proactively about your personal brand. And we're going to talk a bit about some of the things that you can do to manage your brand. But first, I want to turn it back over to you, Jean, for the fifth and final poll question. Okay, let's launch that right now. And please take a moment to answer this question. Do you promote your own accomplishments? Please select one now. Okay, just about everyone has voted. And I'm going to close that now. So what it's saying is 47% say they rarely, if ever, promote their own accomplishments. 46% say they promote, promote their accomplishments but not consistently. And 7% say they confidently promote their accomplishments. Kim, back to you. Kim, back to you. Thank you, Jean. I apologize, but there's, there was a, a glitch there, and I didn't hear what you said. Okay, there was a glitch, and I don't you know what... just quickly repeating those percentages? Yes, absolutely. We did have a glitch, and I apologize for that. So it says 47% rarely promote their own accomplishments, 45% promote them but not consistently, and 7% say they confidently promote them. Great, thank you. So one of the greatest challenges that I see among professionals is this sense of discomfort that comes with self-promotion. Most professionals assume that if they keep their heads down and they do a good job, others will notice and they'll be rewarded accordingly. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Most people are simply too busy to notice other people's work unless it's right in front of them. So to maximize your brand, you really need to make an effort to actively promote your accomplishments. When I say that, I'm not talking about obnoxiously tooting your own horn. I'm talking about sharing your value with others. This could be something as simple as a casual conversation where you're sharing what you're working on, or a more formal status report to your manager that details the highlights of your week. You also want to be sure to maximize your participation in meetings and groups. If you sit quietly in the corner, you miss a great opportunity to showcase your value. 
ask questions, take a position on on it, share your ideas, and volunteer to get involved in strategic activities. You want to communicate effectively, both verbally and in writing. Poor communication can significantly damage your brand. If you're not a strong writer and you need to send a message to a high-level leader, ask a trusted co coworker to proofread it. When you're speaking, be clear and concise to get your points across. And if something's not clear, don't make assumptions. Ask clarifying questions. And finally, be relevant. Engage in ongoing professional development activities to keep your skills fresh. Read industry publications or attend industry to stay on top of the latest trends in your space. Talk with experts internally or externally. So for example, if your company releases a new product and you want to learn more, talk with somebody on the product. And finally, be strategic. If you want to maximize your personal brand, choose your associates wisely. If you surround yourself with others who have a negative attitude, a bad work ethic, or a bad reputation in the company, despite your best efforts, you will be guilty by association. Always have a positive attitude. No matter how talented you are, if you have a bad attitude, people will not want you on their team. Work can be frustrating, you'll always have days, but generally speaking, you want to try to take a solutions-oriented approach rather than a problems-oriented approach. So in other words, don't just complain about something that's not working, propose a solution. It's a great way to add value. Dress it the part. If you want to get promoted, look around. What are other leaders in your organization wearing? How are they speaking? How are they behaving? The easiest way to get the role you want is to start doing it now. And finally, maintain a professional image online. We've all heard horror stories about people losing their jobs because of Facebook posts or other online image issues. It's fine to use social media for personal reasons, but never assume that other people won't see it, regardless of your privacy settings. Obviously, you want to stay away from incriminating activity, but also from engaging in provocative or controversial discussions that might come back to haunt you later. Many recruiters use social media to gauge cold to fit. So be aware of how you're presenting yourself directly as well as in your interactions with others. So I'd like to share a few recommended resources. There are countless personal brand resources these days. I chose a sampling that I thought would expand upon what we've been discussing today. The first is Me 2.0 by Dan Schwabel. It offers great insights, including a lot of great tactical advice on how to manage your brand. It's targeted primarily at millennials, but its themes have relevance to people of all ages and at all stages of the career life cycle. Reinvent You by Dory Clark is a great resource for professionals who are interested in making a change. It talks about how to update or reinvent your brand in order to achieve your goals. The Startup of You by Reid Hoffman, one of the co-founders of LinkedIn, is, is one of my personal favorites because it really emphasizes the importance of driving your own career. It offers strategies for managing your career and your personal brand. And then finally, I included the brand called You by Tom Peters because this Fast Company article really started this whole discussion of personal branding. While it was written back in 97, many of the themes are still very relevant today. Okay, so I'd like to now open it up for questions. Jean, do we have any questions? Yes, we do. We've got a good number that have already come in, Kim, so let's get started. It says, one of the questions says, is there a difference and does it matter if you have a different brand between coworkers and peers versus management? For example, when I'm with coworkers, I act very casual, sometimes too casual. When I'm with management, I act strictly professional. Does this hurt my brand? I would say the answer is it depends. Uh, you know, I would, I would always strive for a more professional brand. Um, coworkers are great. You know, they can be great friends to an extent, but you never know which of your coworkers is going to become your next manager or is going to get promoted within the organization elsewhere. So 
you really want to manage that image as much as possible. And that's not to say that you shouldn't have, you know, some fun and, and relax, but, but keep it as professional as possible. Okay, next question it says, I'm a young professional and a recent graduate. When should I develop my personal brand? Now. <laughs> um, it's never too early. This is something that in the early stages of your career, it actually works to your advantage to start thinking about. I think, like I mentioned earlier, for most of us, we don't really consciously think about it until we're in the middle of a crisis or a, uh, you know, at a crossroads where we need to start thinking about making a change. So it's great that you're asking this question and taking advantage of the, this resource uh, to start thinking about it right now um, and to be proactive about it throughout your entire career. Okay, now kind of moving along the time spectrum, this person said, as a career, mid-career professional, is it appropriate to reevaluate my personal brand and how would I do that? Absolutely. And I think, you know, some of the things that we talked about already are a great way to do that. So beginning by thinking about what's your goal. So why would you be reevaluating your brand? Are you thinking about making some type of a career transition? Are you stuck in your current role and you're just not able to get to the next level? Um, it really gives some initial thought to what it is that you want to do that will help you better determine what changes you need to make to maximize your brand. Um, again, once you've determined what your goal is, really start to think about how you want to be perceived, how others are actually perceiving you, and what steps you need to take to reach your goal. Okay, so here's kind of a general question, but it says, where would I showcase my personal brand? In my resume, during interviews, on social media? All of the above. Every time you open your mouth, you are showcasing your personal brand. Every time you walk in a room, you're showcasing your personal brand. Your personal brand is how others perceive you based on how you behave, how you dress, how you speak, how you interact with others. So that's why it's so important to be proactive about it because there are things that you could be doing more effectively that you haven't even considered because it's not at the top of your radar. So to really think about what it is that you need to be doing in order to achieve your goal and try to make some conscious effort to make those it might be some sm small tweaks or it might be some more major changes, but the more conscious you are of it, the more you can actively manage it. Okay, another question. How does personal branding apply in a small business without upper management? Well, I guess I, I wouldn't, I'd need to know a little bit more about the context, but I can say generally speaking, your personal brand isn't just about reaching higher levels, you know, hierarchically within an organization. Um, more than likely, you have to interact with people externally. Maybe you have customers, partners, other people who uh, who have some influence on you, or that you know you are trying to influence in return. And so, it's really important to be thinking about your stakeholders, so to speak, outside of just the people above you. Uh, you know, think about your peers. Think about the people that you work with externally. Uh, your personal brand is also important when you want to make a change, right? So any networking conversations that you're having with people, uh, just in terms of building relationships and getting to know your space more effectively, are all really important. Okay, so another question says, how many social media accounts for personal branding is too many? Does it look unprofessional if I use a few different social media sources rather than microblogging on one account? No, it really comes down to how bandwidth you have to manage the process. So as we talked about earlier, consistency is key, right? So having a, for example, having a profile out on Google Plus where you're not really engaging with anybody doesn't buy you anything. Uh, so if you feel like you're spread too thin and you're not able to actively manage those accounts, then that's probably too many. But if you feel like you can consistently manage your presence on all of the different social media accounts that you currently have, then that's great. 
Um, at some point, you may find that it becomes too overwhelming, at which point you may want to make a choice and really think strategically about which ones you're getting the greatest return on. Um, but it's really a personal decision based on how well you can manage the process. Okay. Would you recommend different brands for different careers if I am working in multiple industries? Or is there a way to combine my brand that is universally, sorry, universally applicable to multiple career fields? Now, this person didn't say whether, what kind of fields they were in. But different brands, I different think careers. A really, yeah, I think that's a great question. I don't believe there really are different brands. I really believe you are one personal brand. Uh, and I think the important thing is that you have a cohesive narrative that ties together all of the different parts that you're playing. So you may be interacting with different industries or playing different roles in, in different places, but having that one overarching story that ties them all together is really the most important thing. If you try to, to sort of artific artificially manage different quote-unquote brands, you first of all risk diluting your message, and second of all, I think it can come off as inauthentic. Um, it can be confusing. So I, you know, I just focus on the core of who you are, and then sort of have an understanding of how it all fits together, and be able to clearly and uh, powerfully articulate that to others. Great. Question says, can you elaborate on how to intertwine personal and professional messages on social media outlets, especially Twitter? Sure. So, once again, there's nothing wrong with having a personal presence on social media, and in many ways it actually makes you a lot more engaging. People can get a better sense of your personality, right? These are quote-unquote social networks. So one of the benefits of having these accounts and these presences out there is that you get to showcase more of who you are. Uh, the, the thing that's most important is that you remember that anything that you say in a personal context may be seen from, by somebody who is evaluating you on a professional basis. So don't feel like you have to hold back, you know, if you're talking about your favorite sports team or you're talking about something that you watched on, on television, that's all fine, but just be mindful of how you're presenting yourself and try to maintain as professional an image as possible. You know, people say that as long as your privacy controls are set in a certain way, there's nothing to worry about. I never take that for granted. Privacy controls change in the background. You don't necessarily know what's going on. And people forward your content, right? They might, they might tag you in something. They might retweet you. There's all kinds of ways that your messaging can get out there without you, you intending to circulate it beyond the people that you, you're limiting it to. So just Try to make sure that anything that you say personally, you would feel comfortable having somebody at the professional level seeing. Great advice. Okay. Who are good people that you can recommend who might offer honest and meaningful feedback on the effectiveness of my personal brand? Great question. So, you know, sometimes your direct manager may not be the most accessible person or the person that you feel most comfortable having this conversation with. But if you have a good relationship with your current manager, they're a great source of this feedback. Previous managers can also be a great source of feedback. So if you have continued a relationship with someone that you've worked with in the past, these are great people to tap. Coworkers are great because they sort of see you from a different angle. Uh, definitely feel free to talk with previous or current coworkers about how they perceive you. Um, anybody that you might consider a mentor, uh, you know, somebody that, that knows your work well and has been a trusted advisor to you. Um, you know, people, people who know you and, and that you feel comfortable will share some honest feedback with you. It's, it's not always easy to get people to be honest 
it's uncomfortable for them to say anything other than positive things. But if you really let them know that you are looking for this feedback because you want to grow as a professional, most people will uh, you know, feel more comfortable about it. And like I said, if you're not finding people who are willing to do this in, a, uh, in an informal way, something like a 360 degree survey where you can get that feedback anonymously is another great way to get, uh, to get this uh, type of information. Okay, someone is asking, you know, personally and professionally, she says, I feel like I am consistent in my presentation of self. I have recently added an additional expertise to my professional life, which is related to my career, but its own entity. What recommendations do you have regarding differentiating expertise without seeming like a Jane of all trades, for example? Mm. That's a good question. And I think it's, it again kind of goes back to that whole concept of Hatt's cohesive narrative. So, you know, obviously I'd need to know more about how different that is from what you do in your quote-unquote day job, but there should be common thread there. And if you can sort of talk holistically about who you are, what you do, and, and how these two sides of yourself fit together, then you can maintain a consistent brand. Uh, you know, one thing that you might need to consider just from a tactical perspective is would there be a perception that this new, um, you know, new endeavor is in, in any way going to cut into your commitment to your your current role. So that's another reason to have a great story because you can sort of talk about how it enhances your your overall career, your overall commitment to your goals. Okay, I'm sorry, we had another glitch with our audio. We will be checking on that. Kim, another question. When you work with a client from the starting point, how long or how many hours has it generally taken to get to an area where someone has begun to establish a strong brand? Well, that, that's unfortunately a difficult question to answer because it really depends on where you're starting from. So some people are coming to the process with a relatively strong brand and just need to make some of those tweaks that we talked about, you know, just sort of reframing some of your previous experience to make sure that it aligns with your target direction. And other people may be having some greater challenges and you need to really take a step back and think about it um, at more of a basic level and build from there. So, you know, personally, on average, I work with people from anywhere from one to three months, but it's highly dependent on the individual and what they bring to the process. Okay, so there's some questions about resources. So what website did you mention, Kim, for media aggregation? And did you use a service oh. for your articles? So Feedly, F-E-E-D-L-Y dot com is a site. I'm sure there are others out there, too, that I'm not entirely familiar with um, that you could do a search, but Feedly is one where you can go in and you can actually create different lists and you can add different news sources and you can just go in every day and scan and it will just sort of aggregate all of the different articles from the, the various sources that you've identified. So it's a very convenient way to get all of your news in one place. Um, sorry, Jean, what, uh, Jean, what was the second part of that question? Uh, she, the question was... Well, I use a, Yes, yeah, is what service do you use for your articles? I'm not quite sure what that means. Did you mention articles? Yeah, uh, I do. Oh, so I use Feedly to find the articles, and then I post them through my regular LinkedIn, you know, LinkedIn and other social media accounts. And I use, um, in some cases, scheduling tools. So I know I had mentioned the automatic scheduling tools. Rather than going out there and saying, okay, at two. Of, Two o'clock on Tuesday, I'm going to post this article. I'll actually go into Hootsuite and pre-schedule it for Tuesday at two o'clock, and then it will automatically go out there, and then I don't have to be the one physically doing it. Great. All right, here's a really, I think, a really down-to-earth question. What do you do if your boss has a bad view of your personal brand? 
or if you think that your personal brand isn't what it needs to be in your organization. So that's, that's a, a great question and a tricky one to answer because it depends on how, um, how damaged that relationship is. Right? In some cases, it may be worthwhile to simply sit down and have a conversation, a candid conversation, and seek the type of feedback that we were talking about. You know, how, where's the disconnect here? How are you not meeting that person's expectations? And what can you specifically be doing to, uh, you know, to, to be more successful in that role? Now, there are a lot of, unfortunately, bad managers out there who don't know how to have that conversation and who aren't flexible in terms of their perceptions. So you'll need to kind of think about whether or not this is something that has gone beyond the point of repair, in which case what you may need to do is to rally the support of other influencers and people around you who support you, like mentors, et cetera, to try to find another opportunity. Or you know, you, it may be worthwhile to invest in repairing the relationship with your manager. So you know, there are a lot of variables involved. In, it, it becomes almost a, a judgment call as to whether or not it's worth trying to fix it. Okay, uh, we're getting close to the end, so two more quick questions. This one is asking, I'm currently working overseas in a job that I plan on continuing for one more year, then moving on to a career in which I have more interest. However, this has been my only career since graduating in 2013. Do you have any advice for how to build a strong brand in an area where I have no personal experience but want to move to? By the first thing that I would do in that situation is to start talking to people in the field that you want to target. So start having informational interviews with people in the space that you want to go into to better understand their particular experiences, what the career path looks like, what advice they would have for somebody who's trying to break into that space. Those are the people that are going to be able to give you the best information about what it will take to move into that field. And then you can start to build your narrative accordingly. Right? So maybe you can use some of the experience that you have today that might not feel directly connected to what you want to do. But there, there are likely some transferable skills and relevant themes that you can start to work into how you message yourself, how you speak about your qualifications and your motivation for moving into that new role. Okay, and the final question for today. Are there recommended ways to self-promote when you don't have many face-to-face -face encounters with those you want to promote yourself to? Or if there are a lot of people you want to promote yourself to? So the, you know, I'm not sure if you mean within the context of an organization. Uh, if you're talking about offline within the context of an organization, maybe you want to grab the attention of higher level leaders who don't know who you are yet. I think one of the, the best ways to do this is to really start to get involved in more uh, projects and initiatives that go beyond the confines of your job description so that you can get more visibility, more people are aware of who you are, and you, uh, you can extend your reach a bit. Uh, you know, and then the other, the online alternative to that would be to start connecting with people on LinkedIn, showcasing your brand uh, through those social media networks so that people start to become more familiar with you that way. And then as you do so, again, try to take those connections offline. Okay, Kim, there were several questions that came in asking if you could share all the websites that you referenced throughout the presentation that they couldn't write down um, quickly enough. So I'm going to ask that maybe you can add those to the slides that, before we post it. So we'll try to do that. Oh, sure. Okay, and then, sure. okay, and Kim, I think you had a contact page that you were going to show next. That's right, yes. And and so obviously we've covered a lot of ground today. Many of you probably still have questions that either we didn't have time for or that you weren't comfortable asking in this forum. I am more than happy to respond to your questions if you want to send me an email. Um, also, if you're interested in more comprehensive support, I'm happy to talk with you about what I do and how I can help. And I'm also offering 10 complimentary strategy sessions. So if you want to 
dig deeper into your own strategy, think about your own career goals and how to uh, address some of the challenges that are standing in your way, please feel free to reach out to me if you're interested in taking advantage of that. And lastly, please connect with me on LinkedIn. I am a big LinkedIn user, love connecting with other BC grads, so I would welcome the connection. If there's anything else I can do at any time, don't hesitate to reach out. I want to thank you, Jean, again for having the opportunity to be here today and want to wish you all the best of luck. Okay. A big thank you to you, Kim, for leading our webinar today. We really appreciate it. And a few final details for people oh, on, you. online. You will receive an email later today asking you to complete a short online evaluation of the program. It really is very quick, so please take a minute to do that. This webinar has been recorded and will be available to view online next week. And finally, our next career-based webinar will be held on Wednesday, December 3rd, and will focus on re-entering the workforce. And you can register at bc.edu slash alumni ed. That's it for today. Thank you and goodbye from Boston College.